Book TV in prime time, all this week, on C-SPAN 2. Washington Journal continues. Our guest, Bobby Ghosh, is Time Magazine's deputy international editor. He joins us this morning from New York City. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for being with us. The cover story of the latest issue of Time Magazine is America Islamophobic. And you start off your reporting in Wisconsin, of all places, talking about the struggle there of uh, one uh, community to get a mosque and the community's response to a mosque that may be coming in. Uh, talk to us about what was happening in Wisconsin. This, this takes place in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And the, and the reason why we chose to start our story there was that we wanted to make the point that this is that controversies over mosques are not unique to New York, and it's and although much of the attention in the in the past few weeks has been drawn uh, to this project in Lower Manhattan, there have been for several months now uh, anti-mosque protests in, in all over the country in, in many different locations, um, in places where the, the 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 ground itself is is not being is not in the question. It's, it's not that, it, that it's sacred in one way or the other. And in, in Sheboygan, uh, there's a small Muslim community, a, uh, a Muslim doctor uh, of, who had been in that community for several years, a practicing internist, um, wanted to build a mosque for the small community on the outskirts of town, very close to rural farmland. Um, and at the start of a story, we, we, we see him at a a uh, town planning commission uh, meeting in in the sit in the town of Wilson, um, and he goes there. He's not expecting any serious opposition. After all, he owns the land. Uh, as I said, he's been there for several years. He's he's well known, well liked in the community, um, and to his astonishment and horror, when the when the subject is opened up to public discussion, one after the other, a series of of people who live uh, in or near that town. Uh, stand up and say the most appalling things about Islam, and 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 sort of say the, uh, the uh, and and he realizes that this this that that his position in the community is not exactly what he thought it was, and and people um, question whether Islam is a is a is a faith of peace. People uh, trot out all kinds of conspiracy theories. One person says, well, it is well known that there are twenty. Uh, uh, terrorist training camps all over the country hidden away in rural areas and we don't want our uh, community to become something like that things like that and things that we've heard by the way uh, in in this discussion over uh, in New York and so the doctor is is sort of taken aback he's he's so he's so stunned by uh, th these uh, allegations i guess you could call them uh, that he's unable to to actually move and that's where our story begins that particular episode i'm i'm delighted to uh, to report ends well. Um, but alas, we've seen here in New York and in other parts of the country, uh, it's become very clear that Islam and Muslims themselves are under a, a greater degree of suspicion and they're being treated with far more hostility than any community has been f treated in this country for many, many years. Uh, to answer the question on our cover, is uh, America Islamophobic? America as a country, as a society, is not. But there is a lot of Islamophobia now in this country. It's growing. It's becoming more mean-spirited, if such a thing is possible. It's growing more vicious. And the hate speech that we are seeing connected to Islam is now coming into the mainstream. That is the gist of our story. You can join the conversation with Time Magazine's Bobby Ghosh. We have a special phone line set up for Muslim Americans. That number is 202 628 0184. Again, that's 202 628 0184. Other callers, Republicans, 202 737 0001. Democrats, 202 737 0002. And Independents, 202 628 0205. Uh, let's take a look at the Time magazine piece by our guest. You report that some of the uh, doctor in Sheboygan's roughly 100 fellow Muslims uh, would say he was naive to try to move forward with this mosque. The majority are Bosnians and Albanians who fled to the U.S. to escape persecution by Serbs after the collapse of Yugoslavia. Scarred by their experiences back home, some chose to keep their faith under wraps. They feared that plans to build a mosque would draw too much attention to their community. How did things shake out? You mentioned that there was resolution in this situation, but how did things shake out within the Muslim community itself? Was there internal debate? 
Well, there was a certain amount of concern, as I, as I point out there the, in the passage that you quoted. It's, uh, Sheboygan was additionally interesting to me because so much of the discussion about Muslims and Islam in this country seems to, seems to surround people of Asian, mm -hmm. uh, South Asian, or Middle Eastern origin. But here you have a Muslim community that is, that is European. Um, they're they're from, from Bosnia, from Albania. Uh, these are people who fled uh, the most repressive uh, anti-Islamic regime uh, in Europe in recent history. People were being, uh, being killed in, in, in the hundreds, in some cases in the thousands. So when they came to this country, uh, they carried with them the scars of, of the, the, the trauma of what they suffered back home. And in this particular community, many of these Bosnian and Albanian Muslims have chosen not uh, to state their faith. Uh, the fact that they're Europeans means there is less attention drawn upon them. They're, some of them have stores, uh, have local businesses, and uh, they, they've chosen not to say that they're Muslim. Uh, there was some community, there was some trouble in that. Well, trouble is not the right word. There was some, some discussion in the community about whether a mosque should be bu built at all. And, and if a mosque should be built, uh, you know, w whether these people would, would attend the mosque or whether they would stay away for fear of being uh, exposed, if you like. Um, and that tells us a story in itself, that, that in this land of the free, uh, where all religion is, is meant to be held equally, uh, people feel, rightly or wrongly, that they need to hide their faith. And, and that made, uh, for me, Sh the Sheboygan example uh, especially piquant. Let's go to Travis, Republican caller in Illinois. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for C-SPAN. Um, I just I just had to say that I think that the uh, title and says that Americans hate Islam, and it's it's very stereotypical of uh, the way that bigotry is seen in this country. I just I didn't like the title, and I haven't read the article, but just finding that uh, there's two mosques that can't be built, it just doesn't seem like uh, the numbers add up. There's plenty of mosques, even in our rural community. When I head out west, there's mosques. We tolerate. There's definitely uh, freedom of religion, and everyone tolerates it, and nobody cares. I, I'm not sure it's, it's quite as cut and dried as that. Uh, it is largely true that there are more, there have been there are more mosques in in the U.S. now than there were ten years ago. In fact, more mosque building has taken place here in this past decade than in many decades before that. Uh, but it's not just about two mosques, Travis. It's about at least a half a dozen, and in some in some cases. Uh, more mosques than that, and it's happening all over the country. And we did some polling uh, to, to try and get a sense of how Americans as a whole feel about Islam. And, and the numbers are really quite alarming. Uh, you, you know, the, uh, about a quarter of uh, Americans think that American Muslims are unpatriotic, uh, that American Muslims don't regard themselves as American. And another uh, quarter of uh, Americans are not sure whether American Muslims are patriotic or not. That's, that, is not a, that is not a good picture of where the community is right now. Um, about a, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get these numbers exactly right. About 43% of uh, the people we polled said they had uh, an unfavorable view uh, of Islam. Only 44% said they had a favorable view. Um, one of the statistics that's gotten a, a lot of attention in recent, uh, in, in the last few days, is that of course, a third of the people we polled don't think an, a Muslim should stand for president in this country. These are, these are opinions, these are attitudes that were once true of other communities. Many communities in the United States have had to go through this kind of uh, suspicion uh, and prejudice. The, the, the Jews famously have got, had to go through this, uh, Catholics. Uh, some of our polling suggests that, that Mormons in this country are still held with a, su a considerable amount of suspicion. So yes, it is true that in, uh, as a whole, America is still a very tolerant society. And indeed, the, the, the many Muslims continue to come to this country because they feel that it is, it is much more tolerant than, say, Europe. Um, the United States is nowhere near as Islamophobic as uh, Europe. In, in many countries in Europe, you have neo-Nazi thugs who are going out uh, beating up Muslims in the street because they're Muslim. That doesn't happen here, and that's something that, that we should justly be proud for. But when we see these attitudes creeping and growing, uh, I think it's important for us to, t to stop and pay attention to that. And while we celebrate the, uh, the inclusiveness of American society, we also need to guard that inclusiveness. And that's the purpose of the story, to notice that, that things are beginning to slip in this one area.
And this from Time magazine, Muslims and mosques in the West, comparing the number of Muslims and mosques in the United States versus some of the European countries, also Canada. There are 1,900 mosques in the U.S. There are 198 mosques in Canada. And then looking at just the population numbers, 2.5 million Muslims in the U.S. compared to 3.2 to 3.4 million in Germany. The total population of the U.S., of course, significantly higher uh, than Germany overall. So you can take a look at those numbers as we go to our next call. Jay in Charleston, South Carolina. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Go right ahead. Yeah, um, this is not so much of a question. This is more of a statement. Um, I just want to verify what this gentleman is saying. I do believe it's a lot of accept accepted racism post 9-11 and... Um, the 9-11 situation is just a subtopic. The main topic is when you look at the three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It's really an eyesore because these three major religions should be brothers. They should be holding hands. Islam just simply verifies what's in the Old and the New Testament. You know, when they look at many of these figures in the Bible as prophets, the only thing that basically different, the only difference actually in Christianity is they see Christ as God or the Son of God and Muslims just see him as a prophet and uh, I grew up in a big city and uh, it's a huge Muslim population that they, they, I mean you have to choose you have to look at people as individuals uh, Mr. Ghosh do Americans understand Islam? Um, not the, the Muslim population in this country is quite small. It's about two and a half million people. They're very widely uh, dispersed. And, and by the way, that's one of the reasons why you have so many mosques here, because Muslims don't all live in, 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 a, in a handful of cities. They're, they're distributed across the country. And many of those mosques, uh, the 1900, are, are actually tiny uh, and, and, you know, a, a single room in the back of a store or in somebody's house. But because the population is so small and, and so widely distributed, uh, they don't get noticed so much. And, um, and that sort of leads to the fact that in our polling, something like uh, uh, two-thirds of the people we polled have, don't know any Muslims. Um, and, and that means that all the knowledge they, they, they have about Islam, regrettably, in, in recent years, has come from watching uh, the news on television. And of course, in that context, Islam is often often comes across in a negative light. Um, and the community, I think community elders themselves will concede, need to do much more uh, to spread the word about Islam, to, to explain Islam to uh, non-Muslims in this country. Uh, and ironically, I think the, the project uh, in Lower Manhattan was designed to do that. And uh, alas, it's having the exact opposite effect. Let's go to Minnesota, where Jennifer is calling. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm calling to say, uh, Mr. Ghosh, I'm calling to say that uh, I can understand why people are against you guys uh, building the mosque. Hello? You're on the air. Go right ahead. Well, he's still speaking. No, you just turned on your TV. No. We're just listening to you, Jennifer. Okay. Um, is because I know why they don't want it down by ground zero. Number one, isn't it true that only about five blocks away there's already a mosque down by ground zero? And to me, having to put one two blocks away is, like they say, a slap in the face to the people that lost people on 9-11. Because those buildings around there are covered, were covered with the ashes of people that died in those buildings. So uh, uh, people they never found, and it just, they're... they're Ashes just went everywhere in around Ground Zero. And Jennifer, thanks for your call. Let's make a distinction. Mr. Ghosh is with Time Magazine. He's not advocating for the mosque in New York City. Go ahead. Um, first of all, the, the, the other mosque you referred to, that's about t more than 10 blocks away from uh, Ground Zero. And part, of the, and part of the problem is that that mosque is very small. There's a spillover. There are more worshippers than they can deal with. And, and in fact, uh, the same uh, imam is, is one of the people behind this project because he needs some place to, uh, to expand his, uh, his flock. Um, look, not everybody who is opposed to this project is by definition an Islamophobe. That is far from what we are trying to say. The many people have genuine uh, secular uh, objections to the project and, and many people are uh, 
feel sympathy towards the families of those who lost their lives and worry that uh, having an Islamic center, a cultural center there, would amount to uh, an insult. But this notion of that area being sacred is somewhat undermined, is it not, Jennifer, by the fact that there are strip clubs within two blocks of uh, Ground Zero. There is a, uh, what I would describe as a naughty lingerie shop uh, uh, there. There are, uh, it, it's, it's Lower Manhattan. All the things that you get in Lower Manhattan, all the kinds of stores, there's a McDonald's, there are, uh, there's a deli, there are other uh, stores of various kinds there. It, it's, it's, this is not, um, this is, th there are many other things there that feel far from sacred. And, and if you forgive my saying this, having a religious center there that is built for interfaith dialogue, dialogue between all kinds of faiths, which is the purpose uh, b of the promoters behind this project, actually introduces an element of, uh, of the sacred in a, in a couple of block radi uh, radius, where at the moment there isn't. Um, if it's okay for there to be strip clubs there, um, then it seems a little odd to oppose what is meant to be a, an important religious and uh, interfaith uh, center. Caller on our Muslim Americans line, Mohammed, is calling from Minneapolis. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I'm uh, originally Iranian and uh, was raised as a Muslim. Now, um, here in the U.S., in the past year or so, especially since that failed uh, Times Square bombing, where the man came from a family, you know, a young man coming from family, having integrated into the American society and had attempted to kill innocent people in Times Square. It has made me very embarrassed about my religion, my background, and my name. I've been living in the States for about 32 years, and for the first time in the last year, I'm almost embarrassed at times to introduce myself as Mohammed. <laughs> I'm I'm really sorry to hear that, Mohammed, and uh, I and I know that you're uh, that you're uh, far from alone in this uh, in this feeling. Uh, I was in Dearborn, Michigan, which, as you know, is is uh, has a quite strong concentration of uh, of Muslims from all over the world uh, and a strong a large population of American Muslims. Uh, and there is a certain amount of disquiet there too. There is a discussion within the community uh, about, and I'm sure there is this discussion that takes place among Muslims all over this country about whether this mosque actually draws more attention to them and increases the hostility that they uh, that they uh, encounter every day. Um, and then there you have the uh, people who say, no, it's important for this mosque to build to be built not just on the principle that a religious uh, uh, structure should be allowed to build, be built wherever in, in this free country, wherever it's legal to do so, but also because after, hopefully, after all this uproar dies down, if that center is allowed to be built and it, if it functions uh, in the manner that its promoters intended to do, then it will do more good than harm because it, it, will, it will show, it will reach out to all the communities and encourage a discussion on Islam and Islam's role in American society and America's role in, uh, in the evolution of Islam worldwide. Uh, and that that discussion will lead to better, uh, will lead to greater understanding um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that the people such as yourself will not feel uh, quite so constrained in introducing themselves to people as Muslims. The New York Times has a profile of Faisal Abdul Rauf, who wants to uh, build this mosque, and it says that after 9-11, he was all over the airwaves denouncing terrorism, urging Muslims to confront its presence among them, and saying that killing civilians violated Islam. He wrote a book, What's Right with Islam is What's Right with America, asserting the congruence of American diplomacy and Islam. That ample public record, interviews, writings, sermons, is now being examined by opponents of the downtown center. Do we know who this man is? Do we know who this community is? Has that really entered into the discussion over the past couple of weeks? Well, we know him, we know him very well. He, he is an American Muslim. He has been in this country. He's been in this city for many years. He, uh, he has been uh, a very, very active member in the interfaith uh, community, if you can call it that, uh, he, he's he's well known within uh, the American Muslim community and to and to people who who pay attention to that community. He's known well known as a conciliatory figure, as somebody who uh, who not only is moderate uh, as a as a as a practitioner of of Muslim, but also takes a fairly global view about the the about Islam and and is very good at being able to. Uh, to criticize where criticism is merited. Um, a lot has been made in recent days of, of a radio interview, and I think the New York Times story references this, 
uh, where he was asked to, to criticize or he was put in a position where he had to criticize Hamas and his answer was, was seen as being uh, equivocating. But in that very same interview, he said that he's a supporter of Israel. Uh, that's a very, very, very hard position for a leader in a Muslim community to take. But the fact that Imam Faisal was able to do that tells you a great deal about him, I think. We have an email from Caroline who writes that we all know that the majority of Muslims are good, peace-loving people. The problem is that a few Muslims who've been living peacefully in society for years suddenly do something hostile. How do we know which are the good ones and which are terrorists in waiting? Well, that is a question for law enforcement, and and you know I, I spent uh, a considerable part of, of last year covering uh, the national security beat at Time Magazine, and I, I'm I'm quite uh, reassured that law enforcement is doing a far better job of that than most of us know. Um, it's also a question for the community uh, to deal with, and in some places they are. I mean, there's this famous case that took place last year where five young men. Uh, from the from the Washington DC and Virginia area traveled to Pakistan allegedly they're still being tried but they're ap apparently to to try and get training at a, at a jihadi camp and, and join the 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 holy war uh, the most interesting aspect of that for me was that they were turned in by their own families it was their own families that essentially brought this to the attention of the FBI, and uh, then the authorities were able to pursue this. They were these boys were picked up in in Pakistan, as I said. They're currently, I believe, their case is still being you know, being heard in the courts. But there is th there is evidence. I think quite a lot of it that the community is beginning has been addressing uh, the, the extremism in its own midst. There, there there are many imams. Imam Faisal is among them, who have been working very hard to speak directly to young people and to, uh, to deal with any frustration and, uh, and resentment that they may feel. So uh, d does there need to be more done? Absolutely. And I think most people uh, in the community agree that more needs to be done. But it's not like it's not happening at all. And between the community's efforts to police itself, if you like, and the law enforcement's vigilance on, on this matter, I don't feel, and I'm a New Yorker, I don't feel uh, uh, particularly uh, at, at, at risk because of, uh, because of the fact that there's a large number of Muslim Americans and Muslims from all over the world who live in New York. Let's hear from Richard in Georgia. Good morning. Good morning, C-SPAN. Mr. Gosh, uh, I think Hi, Richard. The, the feeling of the public uh, really has to do with the Islam religion itself. Uh, they seem very in, intolerant and also have a very uh, radical, uh, hostile uh, element in, in the religion. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but what I do know is that after 9-11, very few uh, Islamic clerics came forward to denounce the terrorists. Uh, let's take what's going on in Europe, what I've been reading and seeing. Uh, uh, London, England had over 100 and uh, over a hundred uh, honor killings in the city itself that uh, the London law enforcement refused uh, to uh, investigate because they were afraid that they would inflame the Islamic community. Um, let me correct you on a couple of things there, Richard. For a start, it is not true that uh, after 9-11 uh, that the leaders of the community, whether here or worldwide, did not criticize. That's far from true. Thousands, tens of thousands of uh, Islamic uh, preachers all over the world have con came out and quite unequivocally condemned this. Um, if you feel that they haven't uh, done enough to, to, uh, to condemn extremism, to condemn the killing of innocents, to condemn terrorism in, in all its fa faults, then perhaps uh, part of that blame is, lies with, with the media, that we, perhaps we have failed in, in bringing that adequately to your attention. But it is not true. I've, I've spent many years in the Middle East, and of course I, I, I have been uh, uh, covering the community here. It is not true that the community has not criticized either 9-11 or any other act of terrorism. Islam, Imam Faisal himself uh, has done this, and as I said, tens of thousands of important uh, leaders of the community all over the world have openly and repeatedly criticized uh, terrorism. Um, I'm, I, I, I don't know about that figure of 100 uh, honor killings in London. It sounds to me very implausible. I, I, I would check that if I were you. Let's go to Donald in Tallahassee, Florida. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Go right ahead. You're on with Mr. Ghosh. Yeah. Uh, this is more as 
uh, more of a comment, not a uh, say a quote or nothing. But uh, American, uh, so the Christians of America, we do fear other religion. But I want you to be sincere with yourself today. When you go to your church today and you hear your pastor who is going to teach you one verse who tell you about the rapture is true, which is not, who's going to tell you about Easter egg, which is not, and we don't fear this, but we have the goals to say we Christian, we should fear a man who teach us one verse a week, and then they roll off about begging for money. But we don't fear that. Okay, let's go to a survey that just came out. Uh, we wanted to, to, to take a look at this. This is from the Pew Research Center. A uh, growing number of Americans say Obama is a Muslim. A substantial and growing number of Americans say that Barack Obama is a Muslim, while the proportion that says he is Christian has declined more than a year and a half into his presidency. A plurality of the public says they do not know what religion President Obama follows. And you can see some numbers on your screen. Uh, this survey out just this month, 34% of Americans believed he's Christian. 18% believe Muslim, 43% don't know. Those numbers, a big change from March 2009, just a little over a year ago. What do you make of that? Well, actually, just, uh, just to that point, we did a survey much more recently than that when we did a survey last week while the, the anti-mosque uh, fervor had sort of reached fever pitch. Um, and the numbers are actually even more alarming. Uh, from Well, the numbers have changed a little bit. Uh, something like uh, 23 or 24 percent of uh, the people we polled uh, said they thought uh, President Obama was Muslim and another about equal number said they were not sure. Um, I can't really talk to why that is the case uh, and it, clearly it has the it has the White House very alarmed. Um, uh, the, the, the White House felt it necessary uh, to issue a, a statement saying that the, the president was Christian. Um, I'm not sure that was necessarily uh, that that necessarily helps uh, in this particular debate about uh, American attitudes towards Islamophobia is towards Islam, because it gives the impression that the White House somehow feels that the perception that the president might be Muslim is a bad thing. Um, it's it's a little hard to to understand why two years after uh, uh, the, the the Reverend Wright debate, uh, the 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 controversy over his. Uh, the, the church he went to and the preacher there, how people could come to that conclusion that, that President Obama is Muslim. But uh, it, it is only tangentially germane to, to the, the problem of Islamophobia. It, uh, th there's probably, in, in the sort of Venn diagram of this, there is probably a place where those who feel, uh, th those who harbor Islamophobic uh, ideas uh, and those who think that uh, the president is a Muslim, th there's probably a certain amount of overlap between those two groups, but uh, you need far more sophisticated polling to try and understand that. Maureen Dowd opines in the New York Times today, you can have an opinion on the New York mosque for or against, but there aren't two sides to the question of whether Obama is a Muslim. As Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. Let's go to Queens, New York, where Gary is calling. Hi, Gary. Uh, hi. Good morning. Uh, just to answer your, your question, sir, you, uh, the reason uh, Americans seem to feel he's not a, a Christian is because he, he apologizes to leaders of Sharia states. He's disrespectful to this, the leader of Israel. He plays golf on Sunday. They, see, they seem to think that you're a Christian based on what you do, not what you say. I think that. I hope it clarifies that. Do you have any uh, comments? Thank you for Rich? your opinion. That uh, no, I, I mean that's an interesting insight and and, and something um, that I am relatively new to this country. Uh, I'm still learning more about uh, how people feel. Let's go to Salim. He's calling on our Muslim callers line in Brooklyn, New York. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing over there? We're well. Very thank good, you. Thank you. Very good. I just want to make a few comments here. One of the things I think that is fueling the, uh, the discontent in the opposition is some of the after effects of 9-11, you know, however people perceive that. And secondly, I think part of it is the ignorance of Islam. I'm not ignorance 
not purposeful ignorance, but just not knowing some of the basic tenets. And all, some people are only able to determine uh, the view of Islam by the newspaper reports and some of the media exposure. But my main point I want to bring to your attention is I read an article in the, in the Thursday edition of the Daily News that showed that the choice of the site, the choice of the site, was made actually by the real estate company that was engaged by the administration of the mosque. And this particular real estate person had seen another individual on some kind of um, um, contest on TV and had selected this person to do his, what he called bird dogging, which is looking for sight. And that is how the site was selected in New York. I, I saw that story. That was a very interesting story and, 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 and sort of quite ironic and amusing in itself. Um, but I, I, I worry that those who are opposed to the mosque and, and uh, the, the, in the political sort of upheaval that has taken place since then, that is being lost and, and, and people uh, don't particularly care who first found the spot and, and why it was chosen. There, there, there seems to be much more uh, a fixation of, of where it is and who the people are behind it. Let's go to Andover, New Hampshire, where Maureen joins us on the uh, Democratic Callers Line. Good morning, Maureen. Good morning. Go right ahead. Um, well, I just feel that uh, a freedom of religion is, is basic. Um, but with everything the world's going through, and our country is very humanitarian, it's always giving, and just the, the, the amount of money they were going to spend on this, you know what? It's a place of worship. Give that money where it's needed. You can worship, like he has said, in their homes, in their. You can worship anywhere, and that amount of money right now is just. I think it's. I mean, it could be used so many places. Maureen, that's an that's an interesting point. Um, being a New Yorker, I have to tell you that in uh, that in downtown New York, a hundred million dollars. I think that's the figure you're, you're you're spending. That's what it takes. Unfortunately, this is a very, 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 very expensive city, and, and building here is very expensive. Uh, could they have spent the money in other places? Uh, I'm sure they could. But that equally, that could be said of any church, any synagogue, any uh, place of worship that is being built anywhere in the world. Then why spend money on on building uh, a large? Monuments to the faith when you could when you could spend that money among the faithful and help improve their lives, um, but I think w w I'm tr I, I don't I don't hold any brief for them. But I'm I'm just judging by what the promoters have said. Their objective is to create a place where people of all faiths can come and understand each other and 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 develop an understanding of each other's beliefs, uh, each other's concerns about uh, uh, their faith and the faith of others, um, and I think that. If we take that at its face value, that is a very noble uh, idea. And, and judging by the upheaval that has that has taken place in the last few weeks over this, if anything, it's an argument for such a center. If anything, the one thing we've learned from all this angry rhetoric on all sides uh, uh, in this discussion is that we need a, a place where we can go and, and understand each other better, whether that takes place in a physical building uh, uh, in downtown New York or in, in, in some other context, uh, I don't know. But I guess the, the, the question is, why not in downtown New York? Why not in a, in a, in a building built for specifically for that purpose? And, and I don't think we, need, we should get too bogged down with, with uh, the numbers involved, the, the amount of money that is to be spent. I think the purpose of, the, uh, of the, this building is more important than, uh, than the, the finances of it. Let's take a look at comments President Obama made on the patchwork heritage of the United States. Our enemies respect no religious freedom. Al-Qaeda's cause is not Islam. It's a gross distortion of Islam. These are not religious leaders. They're terrorists who murder innocent men and women and children. In fact, Al-Qaeda has killed more Muslims than people of any other religion. And that list of victims includes innocent Muslims who were killed on 9-11. That's President Obama talking about the enemies of the United States respecting no religious freedom. Let's go to Carl, Republicans line in Erie, Pennsylvania. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my question to Mr. Ghosh is, uh, 
the Catholics have the Pope as their leader, and the Muslims basically all turn back to Saudi Arabia. And in Saudi Arabia or most uh, most Muslim countries, women are treated as just like things. They're not treated as human beings. And my next question um, is, do you believe that uh, when someone kills somebody, innocent people, are they martyred and go to heaven with virgins? Um, yes, you're right. The, the Catholics, obviously, uh, the, the head of the Catholic Church is the Pope. Uh, in Islam, there, there is no single head of the, uh, of the community. There are many sects within Islam, the Shiites, the Sunnis, and others. Um, and yes, it is true that people turn in the direction of Mecca to pray, but that doesn't mean that there is one figure or one mosque or even uh, uh, one organization in Saudi Arabia that commands the, res the equal respect of all Muslims. Um, there is no such figure. Um, as to the as to the the, 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 the condition of women in many uh, um, Muslim countries, it is undeniable that that in in some Muslim countries uh, women are treated very poorly. That is, I would argue that is true in many uh, countries. Uh, despite their faith in the developing world, it's a function not just of religion but also of economics, also of education, and and various other development indices. Um, and and yes, it's true that uh, that women in Islam get a lot of attention in this country because uh, in in some societies they're required to be veiled. They're 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 not allowed to drive. They're not they don't have equal rights as men. But but just just for perspective, keep in mind that there have been, by my count, at least three uh, women heads of uh, government in, in the Muslim world already. There's Benazir Bhutto uh, in Pakistan. There's uh, Tansu Chiller in, uh, in Turkey. Um, and for, uh, forgive me, but I, uh, the, the third one doesn't come immediately to mind. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Megawati Sukarno Putri in Indonesia, the largest uh, uh, Muslim country in the world. Uh, and and America uh, hasn't yet had a uh, female head of state. So th there are various ways of looking uh, at these things. Um, but in any case, none of that should affect our, uh, I, th I would argue, our view of Muslims in America. Um, they're American Muslims. They, they need to be and should be and ought to be treated the way as all Americans are treated. And they should have the same rights as, as Americans have. What goes on in Saudi Arabia uh, should not have a direct uh, effect on, on their lives and their rights in this country. Let's squeeze in another caller, Saeed, on our Muslim Americans line calling from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, good morning, ma'am, and good morning, sir. Um, Hi. For the past few years, I've been listening to how Islam has come up and people like to think that Islam is new to this country, when in fact, over the past maybe 50, 60 years, there has been a Muslim population, uh, which we have, uh, I guess we're forgetting about, the black Muslims, such as the, the Nation of Islam, uh, the Ansar, and the other sects of uh, black African Muslims. Uh, let, let's leave it there just because we only have a few more moments for your response, Mr. Ghosh. Well, that's true. Uh, uh, African American uh, Muslims don't get uh, the same kind of attention uh, within the larger Muslim community in the U.S. The, the, as, uh, it is one of the most diverse Muslim communities in the world. I, I can't think of any Muslim country where uh, you get as much diversity as you do in the U.S. As the African American community, there are Muslims uh, here from every country in the world um, uh, in, in many ways and in, in many ways they feel much freer here than they feel in in many places in Europe uh, and, and many other parts of the world so that's something to be celebrated that is not something to be held with suspicion or regarded with hostility um, I, I think that is something that needs to be celebrated that needs to be communicated better and one last caller Anna Democrats line in Ohio Hi, Mr. Ghosh. Um, could you, I was glad they showed the clip of uh, President Obama talking about al-Qaeda and terrorists. And why wouldn't the people of, say, Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, Iraq, uh, on that same foot, on that same standard, consider the U.S. terrorists in regard to the innocent people who have been killed in Pakistan, Afghanistan by drones? And our, our, our uh, media doesn't even it talk about how many uh, innocent people have died in Iraq or been injured or been displaced. Um, I'm sure there are some people in those countries who feel that way. There, there, is, a, there is a big difference between what the U.S. Uh, is doing and what Al-Qaeda is doing. The U.S. Uh, sometimes, 
uh, kills people without meaning to the the the, the, the call it's called collateral damage for a reason the the us is not in afghanistan and iraq uh, specifically to try and kill uh, innocent civilians or, or muslims whereas al qaeda when when it when it acts against when it uh, when it launches a terrorist operation the specific purpose is to kill and more often than not the specific purpose is to kill uh, innocence is to kill civilians and as the president pointed out more often than not it is to kill fellow Muslims um, I don't think there is a moral equivalence between the US position and the uh, and the Al Qaeda position but uh, having said that I'm sure there are some people in Pakistan and and Iraq and uh, other parts of the Muslim world who feel that way Bobby Ghosh is Time magazine's deputy international editor thank you so much for being with us thanks for having me and you can find uh, his story is America Islamophobic. It's on the cover of Time magazine that's on newsstands uh, right now. That's all for Washington Journal today. Thanks so much for joining us. Coming up next is Newsmakers with Representative Edward Markey. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock Eastern Time.